Hey everybody, I'm uh, back to work on, uh, I'm just pulling parts off of this parts machine. And uh, I just wanted to show, this is kind of interesting, or at least I thought it was interesting. I, I remember theorizing when I was working on my machine, disassembling it to get it down the basement, uh, that I expected that these hand wheels here should have a, an ability to freewheel like this so that uh, when you're using the rapid traverse, this handle wouldn't be whipping around really fast. And I said, typically, you know, there was some way for that to work. And I, I theorized that mine had been modified. And now I just took this one apart and realized that, sure enough, um, when you take this screw out, there are these two washers that were added by somebody. If the two washers weren't in there, the way this would work would be that when it's out, these pins on the back side here don't engage uh, this part. And then you would push in against the spring that's in there, and then you can activate it. So then the idea is that when you're not using it, there's a spring that pushes it back out to this neutral position. So if I wanted to, I could actually uh, make mine work the way it originally did. And I might do that. I haven't decided yet. Although somebody obviously didn't like that feature and decided to get rid of it because they put these two washers in here which forces it to be engaged into the pins all the time and I imagine that's probably from working at the front of the machine and reaching over kind of well, let me see so you can see maybe if you were standing here and you were reaching over with the handle like this it's kind of hard to push it in well, I just took that top uh, speed selector sheave pulley assembly off and uh, I was thinking I might try and sell that on eBay. Somebody's had one on eBay for quite a while, but they've been asking for like 250 bucks for it or something. So it's either a situation where nobody needs it or nobody's gonna dare approach his price. But I was thinking, boy, I could put mine up there for half, half of that or best offer and see what would happen. But I just took it out. The good news is this belt is in excellent condition. It looks a lot better than my belt. So I think I'll swap this belt with my belt with this belt, so I'll have a better belt. Let me show you what's wrong with this thing. Actually, over here, I can see all right in here, this is all weld bead built up. This is all welded to be built back up. So, this must have been broken, and they fixed it by building up a weld bead. And then, uh, so that's that's trashed. And then, the brake on this thing didn't work, which is what he, what he said it needed work said you know that the brake didn't work well apparently the banding is completely shot and then they continue to just engage it I guess and it must have been metal on metal because this is completely there's a big gouge right here and this is just trashed so that's unfortunate so this is a block for the uh, DRO so I just want to make a note to myself where this is located on the knee and I've got this uh, rest of the thing pretty well stripped I got the table off I just dumped that over in the woods I'll get a photo of that. We'll throw that on Craigslist and see if anybody wants to turn it into a welding table for 40 or 50 bucks. And uh, if we can't get that for it, then it's going to go with the rest of the stuff to the scrapyard. And I'm going to take that head off. I've already taken off the, uh, the low and the high range mechanism there. That might still have some usable parts in it. And I took off the belt housing. And that's the uh, lead screw and the handle for the saddle well it's another Sunday morning it's been about a week since I procured the uh, parts mill and got myself the spindle and took this all apart and cleaned it all up um, I'm going to repack the uh, grease in the bearings this morning this top bearing here I decided because uh, it's a double shielded bearing and I can't really do anything to service it to replace it because it's just a regular bearing there's nothing special about that one and found on eBay a uh, new old stock bearing uh, I think this shipped was about like eight bucks and it's a uh, exactly the same type of bearing not only is it double shielded just like that one it's even the same brand FAG so we'll put that bearing on put the spindle back together So I still have my extra special Mobile Grease 28 synthetic grease, uh, which 
which is what was spec for these bearings. And I've got my bearings on the tray here, and I know that I left them in this orientation so that I know that the one on the left is the first one to go on. I also know that the side with the writing all in the outer race is going to face against the side with all the writing on the other bearing. And also for added measure, I had written myself notes here telling me that the R8 end, which is this end of the spindle, the inner race has an M on it that's going to face towards the R8 end. So I know this bearing goes on like this first. So I'm going to pack this one first. Packing these the same way I did the other ones uh, following the uh, method that I saw used by a professional shop that does rebuilds on bridge boards. Explaining how he was packing part of the bearing completely with grease, leaving a void, and that as the bearing ran, the grease would distribute itself. And that that way he was assuring that he wasn't overloading the bearing with grease. So this is going to be the second bearing. And the reason why I don't just fill this whole thing with grease solid and pack it in there is because that's actually too much grease and that can actually uh, be as bad as not enough grease. That's number two. So I'm not sure I keep these straight. So I'm going to keep number two closer to the new bearing that goes on the top. And let's see. Yeah. The trick is getting your gloves off. Got my gloves off and only got that much grease on me. Boy, that, that right there deserves a sip of coffee. Oh, Tim Horton's in the dishwasher. So we got John Deere this morning. My late mother-in-law, who, uh, who was one of the nicest women I've ever met, uh, she knew I loved old tractors, so I think she got me this one Christmas. And it's kind of ironic because I don't have any John Deere tractors. But I was a big fan early on of uh, the Johnny Poppers, uh, specifically the uh, the John Deere, the early John Deere diesels. Um, I went to a tractor show once and saw a uh, saw a John Deere Model R in the uh, pulling competition, and uh, it won its class. And I just uh, I just sat there. I remember that tractor being parked waiting for its turn at the run and it was just idling and I remember just sitting there and just listening to that what I thought was the most uh, beautiful sound in the world of that 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 big old diesel just cook clunk and cook clunk you know sitting there waiting to go and then when I heard it during the poll and watched it, its performance I was really impressed the um, the Model R uh, the, at least the particular one that I saw, and I, I think all the Model R's. I remember, I used to know a lot more about these because I was researching them when I was falling in love with them. And the Model R is what's called a Wheatland tr tractor. It's got a solid front axle that's not adjustable as opposed to a row crop tractor. And it's very big and stocky. And it was basically designed for the, uh, the high plains and the large big wheat fields of the Midwest. So it's not a common tractor. It's actually the Model Rs aren't really that common to begin with. I don't think um, a lot of them probably went to the scrapyard. But as far as like as a collectible, they're a little hard to come by. But here in the Northeast, they're pretty rare. So when that Model R showed up at the tractor show, it was the first time I had seen one. And um, so then I did a little research and found out well the Model R was replaced by the Model 80. And then the uh, Model 80 was replaced by the, uh, I think, the 8 
twenty or the eight thirty or something like that. So I think my dream tractor was the model eight thirty or eight twenty, whichever one it was, which was the last of the Johnny Popper diesels that John Deere made before they went to the multi-cylinder design. What do you want to call it? The uh, vertical bore. And, you know, ironically, they were able to get more horsepower out of those just with improvements in design. So the, that's what happened. That was the, that was the fate of the Johnny Popper. So what else was I going to say about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the 830, uh, I think there was a version that they uh, added power steering and electric start. And... But anyways, there was a time when I was pursuing one of those, uh, you know, looking to see if one would pop up somewhere and actually thought of maybe buying one and I think back then I could have probably laid my hands on one for a few thousand maybe <laughs> but uh, now you see one of those and they're they're they've really gone through the roof price wise and it's a massive tractor you know the other problem with that tractor is that's a tractor if you own that tractor you gotta pretty much have like uh, a big uh, beaver tail trailer with a semi to pull it or something or, or at the very least a big gooseneck trailer multi-axle and uh, maybe my one ton Dodge could pull it but you know that's a whole just taking that to shows is a whole another ordeal that's that's uh, guys who are contractors and have more money than me they can do that kind of thing okay this is number one so I'm trying to get the excess grease off of the outside of the bearing and the bore. Okay, so now this puppy I had just explained. This is a Fafner bearing. This one, we got the M on here is going to face the R8 end. So that's going to be on this way all right so far so good now we've got to find something that's going to allow me to press this on so I heck our cat's a calico and uh, apparently calico cats are known for being mental defectives and ours is no, <laughs> ours is no exception. I don't know what that cat is doing up there. Nobody's awake in the house. That cat is freaking out up there. I guess I'll pause the camera while I go in search of something. Alrighty, so I got a piece of ABS pipe right here that is uh, like almost a perfect um, size. It fits, just fits over this OD. And it's got a wall thickness that's going to be perfect for pushing that down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little sh paper shield um, because this end is factory cut, but this end here is just rough cut by the last time I used this, and it's not actually straight. But I'm not going to square it up because I'm not going to. I'm just going to be tapping that side. Um, but even if I deburr this, I'm worried that there may be some little plastic filings or chips or whatever stuck to the inside here that might just want to fall out. I don't want any debris, even like if I'm hammering and something's on the hammer and I don't know it, I don't want anything to fall into that bearing. So we'll put a little paper shield on there and uh, use that to uh, keep anything from getting in there. So I just go to uh, grab me a pencil and ideally I folded this before I drew my circle, which is stupid. Try and find the uh, halfway point of that circle. I can eyeball that. That looks about right. Now that I folded it right in half, grab me some scissors. A place for everything and everything in its place. Okay. 
finally found some scissors to cut this. Actually, perfectly honest, I never did find the scissors. I got tired of looking and I ended up grabbing some metal shears that actually had close enough tolerance on the blade still to, to work. Oh, and you know what I did after all that? I used the pipe. I used the OD of the pipe to cut the hole. Who noticed that? Who caught that? So my stupid shield now doesn't really cover as adequately as I would want it to. So just, uh, we'll do that again. We will do that again. We'll do this time. This time I'll allow for the. Uh, this time I'll allow for the thickness of the pipe. Ah, that's obviously not the center, idiot. I did better the first time. So this time when I'm cutting, I'm going to stay in. I guess I can give myself a uh, hand. Hand draw. I don't know if the clock on the radio is right. The time that they're saying on the radio, I don't know if that's right. I don't know if they were that automatic automated system was able to take care of the wonderful daylight savings time adjustment we make here in New England this time of year so the clocks get set back one hour that was supposed to happen at uh, 2 a.m. <laughs> last night so my wife did hers before she went to bed and I haven't done mine yet so when I woke up this morning I woke up my body still thinking that it's you know I don't know it's 6.45 or so Sunday morning, and in reality, it's, well, reality. Who knows what reality is? As uh, Chicago, the band, most eloquently put it, does anybody really know what time it is? So, uh, daylight savings time. Some uh, protests apparently going on around the country. People trying to uh, say, hey, you know what? It's just not of any use anymore. It's it's a it's a pain in the butt. It definitely screws up your sleep. You know, you know some people are on the side of saying, oh, well, they gained an hour of sleep because now, you know, if they're not going to get up until uh, eight o'clock uh, because they set the clocks back, all right, you know, supposedly that somehow is helping them, but or whatever. And it's supposedly, I forgot what the heck, I, I think it actually goes back to an, an agrarian calendar type of thing where the whole idea was it was supposed to give the farmers more time in the, uh, in the field uh, to bring in fall harvest or something along that line. Um, my opinion is, um, I'm, I'm currently reading a book, fascinating book, that I've always wanted to read by... Uh, and I never get around to, by Howard Zinn, I think is his name. And it's a, uh, it's a People's History of the United States. And it's a history book unlike any other history book um, that you've probably ever read, if you, haven't, if you haven't read this. I mean, most of us, the only history books that we've ever read were what were given to us as textbooks in school. And the whole point of this book is to basically give you a completely different perspective on the founding of the country. It starts with the discovery of the country, and it, it you know goes right on up. And actually, they keep uh, abridging it, I guess, and adding more information. So depending on what year the book is that you bought. Um, how I found the book, uh, I have to admit, it actually it's a it's a quote from one of my uh, one of my favorite movies, which is Goodwill Hunting. Uh, the, the movie that made Matt Damon and Ben Affleck stars and uh, for those of you who don't know the movie it's a great movie about a, a, a young man who's uh, troubled uh, he went through uh, the foster care system and was abused and uh, had some real issues but he was born with just a uh, innate sense of uh, of math and could just do, you just pick up a book or read it and then just do high level mathematics. So he gets a job as a, uh, as a custodian working at, um, I don't know if they ever actually, yeah, I think it's MIT, 
Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He gets a job there as a custodian there, and but then he goes around, sneaks around at night, and he solves these high-level problems. And then this professor ends up catching him and finding out who he is, and uh, he gets arrested for assault and battery on a police officer. And the professor comes to his hearing and makes a deal and with the judge and says that you know the guy's got a great brain. He says you know let me kind of like tutor him or mentor him. So I, I don't want to give you the whole story. Anyways, when he's talking, one of the things he has to do is court-ordered uh, psychiatric uh, visits, therapy. And when he's talking to uh, Robin Williams' character in the movie, is a, uh, he's a, a psychology teacher at uh, Bunker Hill Community College. So you got the you know the high-level institution, MIT, you know, the elite, the money school, and then you've got the contrast of the Bunker Hill Community College situation. And so the two professors there don't, you know, they, they know each other because they both graduated from the same school, but one went and became this math teacher, this high-level math professor at uh, MIT, and the other one became this lowly psychology teacher at Bunker Hill Community College. So there's a dynamic there that's kind of interesting. But... Um, Will's character, he ends up uh, talking about the books in, in Robin Williams' character's office. And he says, ah, he's criticizing him for reading all the wrong books. And one of the books he mentions that, that this guy should read is uh, A People's History of the United States. So, it always stuck with me, I don't know why. I have a weird memory for movies. I can remember quotes and things for a long time. So anyways, of course it helps that I've seen the movie several times. Uh, so I decided to read that book and uh, you know it talks about uh, there's a lot of a lot of discussion about uh, classes of people and how the how the few rich oppressed the many poor and the different, the different uh, mechanisms they use to exert control over the poor. And I'm at a point now where I'm reading about the uh, late 1800s, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, and the factory workers, and the women in the factories. Women weren't allowed to vote, but you know, and they were working crazy, like 12 to 16 hour days or some ridiculous thing. You know, the wages for men were $3 a week. Wages for women were a dollar a week. Um, many of these people weren't even paid in cash, they were paid in what was called scrip, which was credit, and it could only be used at the factory store, and the factory stores were, were, were uh, everything was overpriced, and everything that was sold in the factory store, the money went back to the, uh, the owner of the factory. It was just a completely lopsided uh, view. And they talked about the working conditions of coming to work early in the morning and in dimly lit uh, a lot of these factories, they were um, lit with um, whale oil lamps that gave off a sooty black uh, smoke, uh, or whatever the oil lamps were. I guess whale oil was supposed to be, yeah, whale oil was probably what should have been in them, and instead they burned some other kind of crap. So it's just dingy, and, and so it gets back to this daylight savings time, the whole idea that, well, wait a minute, daylight savings time? Maybe... Um, you know, maybe this is just a, a mechanism. Uh, you know, it's an artifact of a time when they wanted uh, the workers to be able to work longer hours in the factory, something along those lines. So they were adjusting the time so that they uh, they had more daylight in the fact coming through the factory windows for these 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 poor indentured servants. <laughs> Boy, talk about going off on a tangent, Steve. All right, let's put this uh, let's put this bearing on. So I got my little shield, and I'm gonna put this on here like this. And that's tight enough of a press fit that it's not gonna just magically go down. I thought it would. All right, so I need to uh, probably set up my press to get this on.
Oh well. Ah, uh, here's my press setup. Of course, the boiler started seconds before I started the video. I don't know if you'll hear me. Well. Huh. Just stopped dead right there. I wonder why. Well, that's why. The sleeve's not tall enough. Glad I didn't keep pushing it. It. And I'll keep this stuff all handy because I'm going to need to push the other one in a minute. Now you can see actually I just pulled this off and you can see all the little bits of crap right there that came off the inside of that tube when it was rubbing on the uh, threads right here. So um, my little paper shield did what I wanted it to do. All right, ready to do the, uh, well, I shut my radio off in the background there before the uh, copyright Nazis get me.